Welcome to episode 68, David Tepper, King of Distressed Debt. Distressed Debt is also commonly known as Vulture Fund. Now, this is an outline of episode 68. There are three reasons why we study David Tepper. First, he's only 59. He's still young and has the potential to be the best trader of Wall Street. Second, he's had one of the best track record on Wall Street averaging 40% a year for himself and 30% a year for his client. Third, he's the vulture king. For pension plans, like not, people are accepting two and a half percent just to get their money back in 10 years. Yeah. How do you do 40, how many years? <laughs> no, I mean, look, I, my long-term record is, is actually pretty consistent. And what is, it's what consistent, is, it's inconsistently consistent. It compounded at what? So for me or yeah. for my investors? Either way. For me, Both. probably like a 40%, what about for and for my investors, investors like yeah. 30%. He was born in 1957 in Pittsburgh. In high school, he had this big afro, which once was given the reason why he could not get a job at McDonald's because of the hairnet. He won a drama award in high school. He went to the University of Pittsburgh, where he graduated in economics with honor. He went on to get his MBA at Carnegie Mellon University in 1982. At age 23, he began work in the treasury at Republic Steel, which was a company going bankrupt. It was a very high-stress job, but he learned valuable experience because he learned to see things differently from inside a bankrupt company. His second job was at a mutual fund company. His third job was at Goldman Sachs where he spent eight years. At Goldman, he was the star trader, but he did not fit well with the culture and did not get along with his boss. He was overlooked for partners three times. And this is a picture of his boss, John Corsine at Goldman Sachs. In 1993, he started his own hedge fund, Appaloosa Fund with $57 million and a partner, Jack Walton. So what is an Appaloosa. It turned out to be a uniquely colorful race horse. Appaloosa Fund specializes in distressed debt. Here's an overview of his unique investment philosophy. He prefers those that have high revenue, right? So bankrupt companies, we know that debt is the, is the um, catalyst that takes a company under, but he looks for those with high revenues that have the ability to dig themselves out. And uh, he's been known to be willing to take chances on utility companies and his reason for this very simplistic view is that he believes that the government will keep these afloat since it's in the public's best interest so where the government's going to be must let less likely uh, to bail out a tech company or something that's more uh, uh, David Tepper would be famous for his courage he was rumored to have a set of brass balls received from a friend as a gift in his office well take a look at this squirrel and you know what it means to have balls. In 1993, Appaloosa's first investment was in a distressed steel company, Algoma Steel, which was in the bankruptcy court. He bought the steel company's preferred shares for 20 cents and sold them within a year for approximately 70 cents. In 1995, he purchased the Argentinian sovereign debt and made 42% return. In 1997, he was the first outsider to buy South Korean debt. In 1999, he made a lot of money, 60% return that year, buying Russian debt. I'm leaving. I'm leaving before my term is over. I understand that it's something I must do. Widely criticized for his inability to stem both economic decline and his own alcohol addiction, Boris Yeltsin was more of a king who couldn't leave the palace without appointing a successor. He inherited a country where mothers... 1998 bought the Russian government debt, betting the country would not default. They actually lost some money on this initially, but he kept buying as the bonds tanked further. And the following year, 1998 was a poor year for him, but 99 returned 60% 
based on these positions he'd built up. In 2003, he posted his best year as a trader by investing in Enron, Wilcom, and Conseco. The following year, these positions helped him make a 148% return. 2002, one of the few people that actually made money on Enron. It is a, an, an equity deal that cost a lot of investors billions of dollars. He actually bought $1 billion in Enron debt. Now remember, he wasn't managing as much money back then, um, so it was a significant percentage of the Appaloosa portfolio, and he made a fortune after the company was restructured. Here's the collapse of Enron in 2001. Here's the collapse of Wellcom in 2002. In 2003, at the age of 46, 10 years after he founded Appaloosa, he became a billionaire. In March 2004, he donated $55 million to Carnegie Mellon University and renamed the business school he went to David A. Tepper School of Business. In 2009, he scored his second highest return 124% during the subprime financial crisis. Appaloosa made over $7 billion in profit and he took home $4 billion. In 2013, he was once again the top hedge fund earner in Wall Street. No longer shy or secretive, David Tepper would regularly appear as a commentator on national TV and let the public share in his insights. You've done this consistently year after year after year after year. So does that mean uh, well, deals like this come along all the time and you they, can see they them? They do. Look, we're, we're, for better or worse, we're a herd leader, okay? We're at the front of the pack. We are one of the first movers. First movers are interesting. You get to the good grass first, or sometimes the line eats you. So sometimes we have negative years, but most years we do well. In 2016, he was the first hedge fund manager to move from New Jersey to Miami Beach, Florida. Without any criticism you might face for, for having moved from New Jersey, I, I can think that maybe there's part of the population that would hear you and then say, but look, you, you wanted to pay less in taxes, and so therefore you went to Florida. Hey, guess what I did yesterday in Florida? Guess what I did yesterday in Florida? Tell us. I was watching a football game with my mother, my brother, my sister, in, in my apartment in Florida. You know why? Because they live here. Not my brother was visiting, but my mother and sister. Listen, unfortunately, I'm getting older. You know what? I walked to work today. You know what it is? I walked in shorts and a t-shirt. Am I not entitled to that, too? So, th so to those who would criticize you, you would say it wasn't about taxes. It was about the weather and family. It's about, it's about family, it's about the weather, it's about the, and by the way, who said I totally cut my ties to Jersey? I didn't totally cut my ties to Jersey either. I still have an office in Jersey. I'm the, one of the largest, if not the largest, charity contributor in Jersey. Hey, David. I what have I learned today? First, David Tepper is the world's best voucher fund manager. Second, he's famous for his courage and contrarian approach. Third, he would double down when most traders would not average down. Fourth, he's not afraid to be the first to punch. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and leave your comments and questions below. My next video will be 10 Trading Rules of David Tepper. Wishing everyone peace and prosperity.